okay, you can see here what's happening with the bar, the weight, the elastic bands. Mm -hmm. It's creating a lot of instability. It helps muscle body mechanics and muscle function. My program. So what do you think an athlete will gain from a bar that's unstable, that there is like elastic bands and the weight is moving, and they have to maintain like that uh, contraction all the way up and down? Let me say first that I know who, who, posts that, who posted that, and I know who, the person who teaches and recommends those types of exercises. Okay. And, and I will say that, as I've said so many other times in the past, every exercise has its own unique biomechanical profile. So that's why you can't say, what do you think of kettlebell exercises? Mm -hmm. What do you think of machines versus free weights, right? You can't do that, right? Every single exercise has its own mechanics, its own physics, its own pluses and minuses, okay? So this exercise that we just saw, uh, in my view, ha is one of the more sensible exercises that this person recommends. I've seen some exercises, and I'll describe one in just a minute, that is not the least bit sensible. So I worry when I see something like that, because um, even though that exercise, and I'll describe it in just a second, isn't so bad and actually has some benefits, um, that doesn't mean that you then go to that guy and say, oh, good, I'll take everything you recommend, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's what I'm afraid of is that there's the exercise I'm thinking that I thought that I just recently saw that I thought was so ridiculous. There are more exercises to show you. Maybe um, it's one of them. Yeah, maybe I'll just wait and say. So on this exercise right here, um, obviously the thing to be careful of mm -hmm. is to not have it be so heavy and so off balance that you're going to get injured, your spine is going to get injured, your erector spiny is going to spasm, something's going to happen um, just because you're trying to do the exercise without falling down. Mm -hmm. But from what I could see, it looked like the amount of weight that that person had was within his grasp to do with a reasonable number of reps. It was not a maximum effort. By the way, he's um, an NFL player. And he had uh, an obviously an even amount of weight on both sides. So that's good. And they were, and they were positioned exactly right. So the symmetry was there and that was good. And obviously they're hanging by elastic bands, which means that they're moving and they're, right. you know, vibrating and jumping and all that. Um, that exercise to me seems useful for a football player to do on a field because there's a lot of little minute things that happen on the field that aren't like just a solid immovable resistance, unshakable, unswinging, mm -hmm. un, you know. So that to me, you know, uh, you know, is going to create the proprioception gotcha. that, that you might need, that you will benefit from on a field when things are moving in ways you don't expect them to be moving. Nice. So that one right there, I would give, I, I would not say that's a good exercise for muscle building. Mm -hmm. But for um, skill movement? But for skill moving, for skill training, for upper level athletics, I would say that's a useful exercise. So um, the muscles, that mean also they are all used together there to stabilize. So that's a good stabilize. Like if someone likes that exercise and he's a beginner, he's not a, like an NFL, they can mimic the same exercise with lighter weight. Yes. Yes. I mean, what I like about that, like, I, I've seen a similar exercise where you're doing a bench press. Yeah. And the elastic bands are holding the weight on the bar. And so the bar is going like this. Um, I don't, I wouldn't think that kind of exercise is as beneficial as this one you just showed us. Because this one here basically involves your whole torso trying to stabilize mm -hmm the tendency for it to move in different directions. When you're doing a bench press, your, stay, your torso is flat on a bench. So your arms are doing this, 
but how how likely is it that your arms are going to have to deal with right. this right you're it's your whole body your whole torso that's going to encounter that on the field mm-hmm. so that's what i like about the squat even though it's the legs that are doing the lifting the erector spinae and the it's obliques built, yeah. and everything are in there you know trying to resist and straighten the movement when it starts to swing that way you sw- so that that to me seems valuable and he did it also in a slow motion to be able to control it. He didn't. He was do it very fast. controlled. Well, obviously, if you do it fast, you get more swinging and more bouncing. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Right, so that gets yeah. crazy. Yeah. All right, so that's the green flag. Yes. All right. Next movement. Right here, like a sort of plank, and there is like a carabelle swinging more challenging okay you're getting a little crazier there right <laughs> all right so what's happening is he's suspending himself on one elbow and the opposite foot leg in a plank right and then this thing is is moving right so obviously if it swings this way he's gotta he's gotta push this way if it swings that way he's gotta mm-hmm. push that way plus and control in the Right. Kettlebell. But what he's doing is he's basically using his arm to either pull or push in or push out, depending on the swinging, right? Mm-hmm. And he's using his straight leg, right, to do the same thing, right? So um, this is where it starts to get weird and far-fetched, right? So whereas the first exercise has a high probability of encountering usefulness you know, similar situations out in in the field where your torso is being hit by two or three different guys at one time right and so you have to have that you know that f- familiarity with that how likely is it that your arm is going to have to you know push in or push out and your foot push in push out so we just talked about how a plank is very yeah. limited yeah. to begin with right mm-hmm. so um, and, and what I find interesting is how people will do an exercise and say that exercise is hard. Okay. But how useful is it? Mm-hmm. What's the application? How is similar it is it to what you will encounter on the field? Um, so, you know, obviously I, you know, he was, he didn't have so much weight on there yeah. that he's got excessive jamming of the humerus into his shoulder socket. Now, what I, what I have seen and bothers me sometimes is when I see a trainer in the gym giving a very out of shape, heavy, overweight person a plank. And you're expecting this, let's say, 50 or 60 year old woman who's 50 or 60 pounds overweight. <laughs> and, and she, you know, is jamming her body weight. She's pushing her humeruses into her shoulder socket. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about someone hasn't been active right so that so and 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 lacks coordination and so this is where you know i i have a really hard time understanding why some trainers just don't use better common sense Mm. but here you know we're talking about a young athlete he does he's not using a lot of weight he's not overweight himself i don't think there's much pressure on the shoulder joint um I don't think there's anything that he was doing that was injurious or, or risky to the hip joint or the knee joint mm-hmm. or anything else. Just that I would really question the transferability of that particular right. skill <laughs> mm-hmm. anywhere. Okay. So is that a green or red? Yeah. I would, I would not give it a red light because I would suggest that it's, it's a bad exercise, meaning that it has no value and high risk. I would just, I would say a yellow light. Yellow. See, uh, when he lost his balance and he had to put his foot down, that's, I think, where the unexpected can happen. But as long as he's controlling it, 
and he's able to put his foot back down controlled, he's good. Okay. Um, as I said, the first exercise I'm fine with, I like. Um, now um, he's doing one leg and in, in, in the book, I explain what happens when we do a one-legged anything, right? And that is that when you look at a person standing with two feet on the ground, especially if they're weighted, you will see that their body weight and whatever weight they're holding is evenly distributed on both legs. In order to do a one-legged thing, you need to shift your body mass and whatever weight you're holding or carrying over to the standing foot so that you yep. can lift the other leg and not fall in that direction. So there's a shift of body mass and that causes, instead of having two legs that are vertical, now you have yeah, one leg that does this, right? It's in the center of the body mass. And that changes what's called the Q angle, which is the quadricep angle. Yeah. And it also uh, changes the forces on the knee. And so you start getting, uh, you know, the knee wanting to kind of sort of bend sideways, more so when you s descend into what would be considered a one-legged squat, but still even in the standing position, you get what's called valgus, yeah. which is this bending of the knee and then uh, the, 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 show, the, the hip strain. Mm -hmm. And of course, the more weight that you're holding, the more that strain is. So then you say, okay, fine. Um, what's the upside? Someone might say, well, the upside is the strain. The upside is the fact that you are accustoming that joint to experience those strenuous right. forces that you wouldn't otherwise encounter in day-to-day -day life. Yeah, and maybe and, strengthen those mus muscle in that uh, specific position. Yeah. Again, you know, in, in all of these exercises, what people should do is they should say, a, how likely am I to encounter a situation similar to that? Because that will directly tie into how valuable simulating that thing is. And then also, what are the limits of that? Okay, so um, let's just say that you on a football field would encounter hitting another player. Um, you know, would, you, would that hitting the other player create the same strain on the hip and on the knee? And would it be with the same amount of weight? So I'm not going to give this a, a red light. I'm not going to, but I am going to give it more of a question mark than the two-legged version. The two-legged version, I like. This one, I can't say I like it, but I can't say that it's wrong. I would almost say, I would say that, that uh, if you did that exercise and you kept it relatively light, it would be productive. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you exceeded an amount of weight that made that was reasonable, um, it would start to get less and less useful and more and more risky. Okay. So green, yellow, yellow. Yeah. I would say that one right there, the third one, um, is a better exercise than the second one. Okay. It's a little safer and also a little more useful. Okay. bench pressing incline bench pressing yeah incline bench pressing with the bar so i'm sure you're going to talk about which muscle now are the most vulnerable because we can see that his elbows are shaking here so what's preventing that forearm from tipping forward and or back um obviously this is not a bodybuilding thing right because an incline press doesn't move the arms towards um any pectoral fibers mm -hmm. towards any pectoral fiber origins and obviously this person is not doing it for bodybuilding and this coach no. is apparently not concerned about that at all he's only concerned with their athletic performance on the field so he might be thinking, he certainly is thinking, you know, that he is trying to improve a skill 
that resembles this on the field, you know? So he would say, you know, you're a lineman and you're going to push in an inclined direction and you're going to push on things that are not stable. Mm -hmm. So I'm creating strength in this in unstable environment. Um, and I would say, okay, well, I think an inclined press, a, a straight barbell inclined press, or even a straight inclined dumbbell press is already increasing the chance of shoulder strain because you're moving the arms in a direction that they didn't evolve to move on a regular, frequent, forceful way. But now you're adding this movement. And so now you're increasing a little bit of that risk factor. Um, and so you, you would have to ask yourself, you know, how much usefulness is there? I, my opinion is that um, this athlete would have gotten at least as good, if not a better um, benefit that is applicable for being a lineman and hitting in an inclined direction by just doing an inclined dumbbell press. Mm -hmm. That um, the, the addition of the elastic bands will not um, significantly, if at all, improve his ability to hit a player on the line as compared to doing an inclined dumbbell press. Right. But I think what happens, um, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't condemn this entirely, but I think what happens is that a, I think coaches are always looking for new and different ways right. of doing things. Mm -hmm. Even if those new and different ways of doing something aren't necessarily better than another older way of doing something. Maybe they're doing that because they want to keep, you know, the client, interested and and involved engaged mentally engaged in the exercise um and not bored maybe they're doing that so they can sort of like create the impression that they are um you know highly creative highly educated highly um you know I, i'm i'm sure most people that have seen this coach's exercise would say that he didn't learn them from anyone these are his inventions creativity yeah uh, and so, but at the end of the day, I think we all should ask ourselves is, is this going to get me closer to my goal? Not only is it going to get me closer to my goal, but is this going to um, increase the, my risk of injury before I even get to the field? So if you're doing something where you say, well, I don't really see this simulating something that I do on the field. So the benefit is questionable and I have an increased risk of injury. Mm -hmm. You might want to rethink doing that exercise. Um, when you do an exercise like that first one where you say, oh, I can easily see encountering something similar to this on the field, but because both feet are on the ground and because I'm doing it slow and controlled, I'm actually getting, you know, a pretty safe exercise. That ratio is what an athlete would, would want to ponder, I think. Okay, so when they are pushing each other this way on the field, yeah, the movement is going like this. Yeah, so that's like a incline. It's like an incline, incline but but keep in mind if you if you were on the line and you hit somebody, they're not going to feel like an elastic band, you know, holding a yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's 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 a solid object, mm -hmm. and it's a solid object that is coming at you from a different direction every time, right? So that's why I say, I don't think that that movement we just saw would adequately prepare you for a 250 pound guy who's coming at you from the side or coming at you from the front, you mm -hmm. know, and you, you hit basically a wall, right? Uh, I think, you know, that simulates more, you know, a dumbbell yeah. than a vibrating, a vibrating weight. Including... Because the yeah. similarity now, till now, all the exercises have that, you know, instability. Well, they have they have the vibration this way and they have right. the forward back. And then they also have the bouncy thing going on. Right. And that's why I say if your 250 pound guy comes at you and you go, bam, <laughs> you know, that's not going to feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but his muscles, they will be adapted to that sort of environment then whatever his power he's going to add to it during that moment, it's his choice because he will see the object coming and he will know where to uh, put all his power to. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking. You know, look, I, you know, I would say I haven't, I haven't spoken to this coach, but I would say that yeah, that he probably would agree that there's no evidence to suggest that this is going to drastically improve a particular thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you wanted to look, be somewhat analytical about it and you said, okay, so before this trend started of instability mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and football players were just doing inclined barbell presses and flat bench presses, you know, can, can, can I imagine or justify a significant improvement in the training by doing it this way versus doing it that way? I, I would say it, it, it would be questionable. There's, it might help a little bit, but I cannot imagine that it would help a lot. Got you. All right, next exercise.